Good morning, good morning. We got another video for you. Sick little Nissan hard body, SR20 swap, S14 notch top specifically. Check it out. Things pretty cool. Nice turbo smart blow off valve, Tomei manifold, notch top as I said. Uh, we are gonna be installing a GT28, um, an AFR gauge and boost controller and then we are going to get it mechanically tuned. So stay tuned for the rest of the video, guys. Wow, 30 minutes later, Jaime already got everything out and started mating everything to the new turbo. So this is a, basically the same exact replacement turbo, but this one is newer and has no shaft play. This one has seen better days. It's a nice downpipe though, Tomei downpipe and Tomei manifold. Cool. So that's why it's pretty dirty, pretty, pretty dirty. But that's why we're here, right? Taking care of this business. What the fuck is that? Oh my God. What is that? Turbo is installed. Manifold is on. New lines are getting plumbed. Installing drain right now. And then we can start her up. After that, I'm just gonna, hopefully I can take off the downpipe over there. Jesus Christ, it's so loose. But hopefully I can take off the downpipe so I don't have to lay underneath the car and weld it in there. But after this, I need to weld the O2 bung for the wideband. And then we could see what our air to fuel mixture is and mechanically tune it from there. So in this video, also, I'm going to be showing you how to get a little bit of beef out of your SR20. It's nothing crazy. And no, it doesn't hurt your motor in any type of way. But it's like to unlock the true power of a stock SR20 with stock ECU and shit like that. So stay tuned. Everything is pretty much back together. So next on the list, after we go over everything, we are gonna be installing the boost controller, then going to uh, weld in the bung, as I said. Other than that, everything went pretty smooth. Got it done in a matter of like four hours. Very, very, very easy job. Let's see, I'm gonna put the uh, the phone down because he has a weird uh, kill switch system and it requires two hands. So let's see if I can position this. Let's see if she starts. There we go. All right. Let's go over here and check out the work. Oh yeah. Got to connect the downpipe though, but other than that, we're pretty much good to go. This sick ass car got dropped off today too. It's a 2JZ GTE VVTi 135i with the Ford rear end uh, TH400 trans. It's a big boy car. We uh we're gonna be doing. Hopefully a fuel system on this, but we are doing a, a chassis harness, uh, making a bunch of little brackets for the car, installing his throttle cable, just a bunch of shit like that. So let's get this. Well, not let's get this, but you guys will see the video on this. Haha, <laughs> sorry about that. You guys thought. I'm sorry about not really showing you the welding process of it, but I didn't realize until now. We just finished up. So I got my MIG welder and I welded the bung. Right. 
don't know if you guys can see it. There she is. Whew. Ready to go. Now all we gotta do is install the actual wideband sensor and we're going to just tune it and we should be able to drive her. Oh, yeah. Yep, but little AEM wideband for the win. Sick ass car, truck. Sorry about that. I love this Turbo Smart uh, Race Sport uh, block file. This thing sounds so nice. Listen. Woo. Beautiful. All right. So now we got the actual wide bung, or wide bung, wide band installed down there now. So we are ready to mechanically tune this girl. Boost controller is installed. Just a reliable manual boost controller is all you need for a simple setup like this. I believe this one was like $40 on eBay, $50 or so. Other than that, all you need is a aftermarket fuel pressure regulator, a boost controller, a wide band, and a good turbo. And then you can basically mechanically tune your engine. And just like that, a FR gauge has been installed. So we are ready to go now. Like I said, I have to do a weird starting procedure, so give me a second. All right, she's on. So first thing we're gonna do, uh, I already have the boost controller set as low as I possibly can. I'm gonna go do a pull and see where we're at, and then we will go from there based on the um, boost gauge and the AFR. Right now we're around 14, so that's good. Let's get this going. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is go for a quick little pull and see where we are at on the actual boost gauge. And then depending on that, we will either add or remove some boost. Once we have that figured out, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the AFR gauge and see where we're running at wide open throttle. So let's go. Okay, so that didn't do shit. So let's go ahead and turn it up. Let's do two turns just for the fun of it. One, two. Now let's see where we're at. If, uh, if this doesn't end up working as a boost controller, which they usually have, I've used them maybe like three, four times now, uh, but sometimes I guess they can have spring and gasket issues. If this ends up not working for us, I can still go to the wastegate and adjust it from there. So, at least that's good. Oh, okay. All right, I wanna flip. Okay, so I've turned it up about maybe five full turns and I didn't do shit. So I'm trying to reverse the lines even though this is the direction. This is a cheap uh, boost controller, so maybe it was made wrong in the manufacturing plant or wherever it was made, but we flipped it and let's see what goes, goes down now.
gonna just do this for shits and giggles. I'm turning the boost control, wow. I was gonna turn the boost controller all the way up and it looks like it's all the way up. So let's see. So unfortunately, we were not able to tune the vehicle. Um, as you guys saw, we were trying to do some pulls. For one, we couldn't get past five PSI. Ended up being the boost controller. I figured it out. Uh, the diaphragm was just really loose, so all the vacuum was just ex escaping. Um, second, uh, found out that the valve seals are bad on this motor, just like the other Kuki that you guys saw. We did the same T28 install. Um, that Kuki, speaking of which, ended up having four bad valve seals, four bad valve guides, and four bent valves. So hoping that this one isn't that bad. I'm going to contact the customer and let them know what's going on. And hopefully we get the go to do the head gasket. Because if so, then we can put everything back together with the new head, do a full head job, and then proceed to mechanically tuning the car. But other than that, everything else install-wise went pretty well. Unfortunately, we had this problem, but... That's how it is in this industry. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Instagram. Support us with our Shopify. Got a bunch of cool knickknacks on there. Um, other than that, have a great week, everybody.